This is a car of many parts, and what you're about to see is an unrivalled look at exactly how McLaren put it together. Good afternoon, McLaren International. Yes, hold the line, please. This is McLaren at Woking in England. This is where we design and build the Marlboro McLaren Mercedes Formula One cars. Let's go and have a closer look inside. This is the reception area of McLaren International. The trophies represent four decades of involvement in Formula One and 104 Grand Prix victories. These are the cars that have achieved most of the Grand Prix victories and represent the Formula One evolution of Formula One design from the early 1980s to the mid 1990s. This is the McLaren Research and Development Department. It's here they're working on ideas not only for the current car, but also new ideas for the future. We have in here a special cooling wind tunnel that's used for testing the cooling efficiency of the radiators. We have the model shop for the one-third scale models and uh, materials testing. And here, this is the Instrom 4 the test rig, where it's possible to monitor a car's performance over the whole duration of a Grand Prix in simulated form. This is the design office. The 1995 Marlboro McLaren Mercedes was designed 100% on CAD CAM system. It takes three months from the start of the design through to the completion of the manufacturing process. CAD CAM is computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacture. The car is designed with Computer Vision CADS 5 software on a Sun Spark station. There is a direct link from the design office through to the manufacturing area downstairs and it's an integrated network to minimize the time delay and also to avoid data misinterpretation. And now we're going to go into the factory and see the race bays where after each race the cars are completely stripped down and then totally rebuilt. Here you see the cars that have just come back from a race. They've only arrived back the day before. Now they're totally being stripped down. This has just come back from a recent, a recent race. It's now being rebuilt. The gearbox has been taken off. They're taking off all the suspension parts. The carbon fiber suspension will be taken to the R&D department to be proof tested. And then the, low, the, the lower yeah, the suspension will be crack tested and the whole of the gearbox will be completely rebuilt in the gearbox department. To make sure that the gearbox is very compact, the reverse gear is actually positioned outside of the actual gearbox. And then for starting the car, the starter probe goes into this section of the part, rear part of the gearbox. The engine is mounted as a fully stressed member of the chassis. And you can see here that the engine is mounted onto these six bolts and bolts directly onto the back of the chassis. There is gold leaf on the back of the, the chassis here to reflect back the heat back into the engine away from the fuel tank. The fuel is kept in a bag tank which is inside here. This is made of a rubber and Kevlar material. It's uh, self-absorbing in the event of an impact. And after each race this will be completely taken out of the car and inspected. This is the section where the fuel housing will go in when they're doing the refueling structure. You can see here on the back is where the electronics will actually be bolted. This is the deformable structure which is to protect the driver. This is made of hollow carbon fibre. It is then injected with a series of silicon bowls and this actually has to go all the way to America to be injected and then is brought back and then bonded onto the chassis. Is that uh, new? This is, a new, this is a new element that has been introduced in the regulations in 1995. Behind the driver is a self-absorber pad which is designed to cushion the driver so his head should not hit the bad back of the chassis and, and cause injury. If you press it soft, softly, it forms, it goes in very softly, but if you hit it, it res uh, absorbs all of the impact. As you can see, the, there's a, not a lot of space in there for the driver. There's only sufficient space at the front for two f pedals, the accelerator and the brake, the clutch being mounted on the steering wheel. The dash would normally fit on here and then the steering wheel would bolt directly onto this column here. Often the driver will take the steering wheel out of the car to get out for, for ease, but all of the electronics that are on the steering wheel are mounted straight onto this point at the front here. Like the other big teams, McLaren has its own machine shop where it can make engineering parts from scratch out of forged bar and rod or from castings which are bought in. 
McLaren also make their own carbon fibre parts, another facility they have in common with the larger and longer established teams. And it's worthy of examination all by itself. Later on, we'll be at DPS Composites, the biggest and best known independent supplier to the British race car industry, who manufacture components in sizes ranging from tiny to huge. Carbon fibre is extensively used in the car's construction. This is the chassis area of the car. Carbon fibre is about five times the lightness of steel, but about twice the strength. And the whole weight of this chassis is about uh, 40 kilos. And it will take about 10 man days to actually build a new chassis. And this is the fuel tank. Very light, it's made of rubber and uh, Kevlar. Extremely light, you see it's made of flexible material and this will be taken out of the car. In fact, this is a much smaller tank than we've had in previous years. This is only 130 litres, whereas in previous years it's been 230. The reason this is for the reintroduction of refuelling. Interesting thing, it's a flexible, it's not like a normal road tank, which would be made of a solid material. There is no ball in there to check the amount of fuel that's actually left in the, in the tank. What actually happens, how they measure the fuel flow, is it's done by counting the number of squirts effectively that go into the engine, the count the injection, and this is calibrated by computer, so you know what the fuel flow of the engine actually is. This, after a race, will be completely taken out, checked, and then squeezed up and put back into the chassis. The focal point of interest in the tub isn't, of course, the fuel tank, but the driver and his environment, basically a dashboard and steering wheel. This is the dashboard of the car been made of uh, carbon fibre. This is the rev counter. It starts at 6,000, goes up to, to 17,000. The operational rev range of the car is about from 13,000 up to uh, almost 16,000 revs. Uh, the buttons here, this is for the neutral button for the gearbox. The hollow section here is for altering the front and rear brake balance. Uh, this is for the fire extinguisher in the event of there being any fire for turning the ignition on, uh, a switch for monitoring the radio, for turning the volume up and down. The lights that are used on the rear of the car in wet conditions to be able to uh, turn those on. And then switches the drinks button. It has the facility there, but so far this year, the drivers haven't actually used it. This is the steering wheel from Nigel Mansell's car. Uh, the buttons, this is the button for controlling the pit lane speed because you have a, a cut in so they know there's a 120 kilometer speed limit in the pit lane. The middle button is the for neutral and this switch here is for the radio. And then these two switches are for the fuel and for, for the gearbox. The driver changes gear by two flipper switches that are on either side of the steering wheel. On the right hand side is the change up, on the left hand side is the change down and it's a semi-automatic six-speed gearbox. The bottom two buttons are the clutch. The car only has the accelerator and the brake, and being semi-automatic, the clutch is only needed to actually start the car. The reason we have it on either side, depending on whether the driver is spin, he can easily move his hands to inject the, the clutch. And on the top here, this is the quick release button for the steering wheel, for the driver to get out, and all the electronics for the, for the steering wheel are controlled down the centre section here, which plugs straight onto the steering column. That's almost a complete car. Later on, we'll follow the engine to Ilmore and consider engines separately. So the only thing left is to paint it up and send it on its way. This is the paint shop preparation area. Here a chassis is being prepared. Uh, we repaint the chassis every two to three races. Uh, be very careful with the amount of paint that's actually used on the car, maybe only 120 microns to save weight. The money and the manpower is all aimed in the same direction. In Formula One, the name of the game is winning and nothing else matters. Second place is just first loser. And a Lacey's Montreal win puts Ferrari back on top of the list of all-time winners with one more victory than McLaren. <laughs>